setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And welcome back to the WBT. This is Michael Lodge, and I'm so glad that you've joined me again. I was reading Inc. Magazine, and there was this really good article. And let me tell you who it's written by. It's written by Mr. Chris Mazziziak. Oh, you know what? I can't even pronounce the last name, and that's pretty bad. But it's spelled M-A-T-Y-S-Z-C-Z-Y-K. Okay. okay, so you pronounce it because I have no idea. But he wrote a really good article about driving and what it tells about your personality. Now, he comes from California, and I came from California. And he lived on skinny roads, and I lived on skinny roads. I lived up by the Hollywood sign. If you've ever looked at Los Angeles and looked up at the mountain and you see that big old Hollywood sign, well, I lived up in that community. It's called the the Lake Hollywood community. It's a really nice a really nice place because it feels like you are way out in the country, but you're right downtown Los Angeles. And <clears throat> what's amazing about it is that we've got deer up there, we've got bobcats, we've got cougars, we've got raccoons, we've got all kinds. Uh, the coyotes are the bad ones because they're always coming into the houses, yards, and taking the cats and the dogs. So, um, But you can always tell where the coyotes are because where we lived there was a, a fire station and when the sirens ran off all of a sudden you heard all of the coyotes howling throughout the neighborhood of Hollywood Hills so anyway to get back to the to the article i found it a very good a very good article and i'm going to read it to you word by word because i thought it was so good because it kind of described my feelings also when i lived there and you were always a little kind of pissed off because of the drivers there. You never knew what was going to happen the next moment. So it begins like this. He says, please forgive me if I sound intemperate. It, it's merely the constant jolt of discovering that what seems obvious actually is not. And driving in California, what you think is what's going to happen is not what happens especially in los angeles number one not signaling thank you when someone has stopped to let you through on a narrow road where i live there are a lot of narrow roads when cars are parked on either side there's no room for two cars coming in opposite directions and i'm telling you there isn't usually you have to park on one side and then you only have one direction and you may just have a few feet between <laughs> between one side to an actual car so you're always watching the the cars that are, are next to you so one has to stop to let the other through and that's true my unscientific research tells me that 50 percent of the time the driver coming through doesn't acknowledge the drivers that let them through and that used to piss me off too because I tell you, I remember one time a lady was coming down in her fancy car. I let her through and then she gave me a sign. And I'm the one that, <laughs> I'm the one that was the nice guy. I'm the one that let her through, but that's attitude. Some don't even look at the driver. If it's in the dark, most don't bother flashing the lights or make some other gesture of thanks what does this behavior say that you are self-absorbed pipsqueak who deserves eternal dissatisfaction okay <laughs> well i tell you sometimes you do get frustrated when you live in los angeles especially after a hard day work a hard day at work and you've met with clients and you've heard long stories and you're just worn out and all you want to do is get home, eat anything that's in the refrigerator and go to sleep and watch a good movie. That's all that you think about when you live in Los Angeles. It's up, it's the grind and back to bed <laughs> most of the time. Number two, not signaling at all. Living in California, I see this more and more. People cannot be bothered to signal at all they seem to genuinely believe that the world or oh, that the only world is theirs and I'm, <laughs> I'm as i read this i'm laughing because i've lived through this okay and people do not signal they just move over 
or they just turn so, without even turning the signal on. And often I thought, gosh, I wish I was a cop so I could give all these people people a, a ticket. It doesn't even cross their minds to let anyone know whether they're turning or when. You're supposed to react to them when they finally reveal their next move. What does this behavior say? That there is literally no hope for these people. Number three, staring at your phone at a stop sign or a red light. Okay, now this really pisses me off too because it happens every single day in Los Angeles. You will be at a stop sign or you will be at a light and the person is reading their cell phone in front of you and the light turns green and they don't move. So, okay, back to back to his article. Okay, so, uh, staring at your phone at a stop sign or a red light. This is trending so very heavy, heavily. People roll up to a stop sign or a red light and then stay there in order to check their phones and perhaps send a text or two. They don't imagine that this world inconvenience that this would inconvenience anyone. They honestly, they don't care. They don't care if, it, if it's bothering you or not, or if you have to get someplace. They don't care. <laughs> they don't conceive that the fact that they are stationary means that people behind them cannot move either. They're too busy checking Facebook. What does this behavior say? <laughs> That their therapist isn't doing a very good job. <laughs> so, well, it's true, guys. Okay, if you're in Los Angeles, it, I, I tell you, sometimes I think everybody needs therapists there. Okay, number four, driving right to the end of a closed lane or even the wrong lane and expect to be left in, to be let in at the very last minute. Okay, this used to happen to me a lot. On the 134, going from my office in Glendale to uh, where I lived up in uh, the Hollywood Hills, there are these lanes that merge. There, In fact, there are two times that this happens where the right lane merges into the left lane. And you will see people go right up to the very last bit and then try to get in, to sneak in. And you want to... Uh, honestly, sometimes you just... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what you want to do. Apparently, science says that merging at the last minute is more difficult because more of the road gets used. Science has never had a fine grasp of human feelings. This behavior says quite simply that the perpetrator <laughs> has no respect to anyone else and that they expect to be appreciated by everyone else for the fact that they have no respect for anyone else. You might think this suggests these people are all tech CEOs. I might think that a reintroduction of the stocks in Town Square... <laughs> okay, the you know the stocks in Town Square where they used to put people in stocks and their head went through this thing and their... Hands went through another thing, and they had to stand in town square in these stocks, okay? Stocks in town squares could put a stop to this behavior once and for all. Number five, slow driving in the fast lane. Okay, I don't know what possesses people to do this, but they get into the far left lanes, and then they slow down. <laughs> and you have to go into the right lanes trying to pass them. And it, it frustrates me a lot because here I am zooming down that left lane. Well, over the speed limit a little bit, okay, but don't tell anybody. But And then all of a sudden you come up to this car that literally stops you. And you say, well, do, do I pass or what do I do? Or is he going to move over? And, and they don't move over. They just sit there like like dodo heads. And then you have to pass them and go, go around them on, on the right-hand side. But it does happen, okay? Does this not cause a reappraisal of your current speed and situation? All too often it appears not. It appears that some people are so caught up in their own world that they see no reason to do anything to accommodate anyone else. Even when that anyone else is honking at them to the tune of, We are the champions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are the champions. Personally, I don't honk. 
Indeed, I often use the inside lane because it proves to be the fastest. But can't we all just consider each other? Oh, what am I saying? Okay, so I thought that was a really funny article. And it made me laugh because I've experienced every single thing that he has said. And I tell you, when you're driving the freeways or you're driving the side streets, and a lot of times in Los Angeles, it's a lot faster to go the side streets than the freeway. Sometimes it takes you two hours to go the freeway, and if you go the side streets, you can cut it down by an hour and 45 minutes. (laughs) I know that's not saying much, but (coughs) excuse me, that's what happens. Los Angeles is a very frustrating place to be, driving-wise, because... You don't know who's driving and how nice they're going to be on the road. There are some real idiots out there. But let's compare that to business, okay? There are a lot of people in the office who have the same mentality as how they drive. They have no consideration to how what they're doing is affecting other people on the team. And so a lot of times you can tell the way that people drive is pretty much how they live the rest of their life, and that involves the office. So I thought it was a very good article of Inc. Magazine, and uh, I just had to share it with you because it really made me laugh. And when I start laughing at something, it's hard for me to stop because when you have lived the situation, it is the same feeling as a writer, and you know exactly what he's talking about. But we have to be courteous to those around us. Driving and in business, in the office, and how we treat other people in the office, and we have to be courteous to other people and how they are doing their jobs. Because if we act stupid, it causes the process to slow down. So this is Mike Lodge once again for the WBT. I'll talk to you again. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs.